In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most requested features that was just added to Big Picture, and that is multiple baselines. This video is part of our effort to provide best possible training around Jira, Confluence, and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You can always leave a comment below if you have any further questions. And remember that you can always reach out to us for one of our paid services like trainings, consultations, or implementations. Okay, so if you used Big Picture previously or really any other project management tool, uh, you know what baseline is. So basically a snapshot of start and end dates uh, of all the tasks in our plan or in general of our plan. So to have it in big picture, because this feature was already available, you could go over here in a Gantt to data uh, menu and just create new baseline. Later, you could enable it in a view and the baseline was represented below the tasks shown on the Gantt chart uh, as this line over here. So you can see that, for example, for me, Epic Free, the baseline start date seemed to be the same as the uh, start date of the task, but baseline is ending earlier than the task. So probably something, well, not probably something changed after we created the baseline and now the task is ending later. So it was pretty nice to have this snapshot and to see what is the drift in our plan from the uh, from the baseline, you know, how does the uh, dates of the task change? But the problem with baseline up till now was that there could be only one baseline per big picture box or per our plan. Uh, the baseline information could be stored in the custom fields on the Jira tasks. And it was a problem because there were only two custom fields for that. So if we wanted to have multiple base baselines, uh, Big Picture couldn't really handle that. And it, it was an issue really, because if we wanted to have plan that is evolving and for example, new change requests appear, so they get approved, the plan gets changed, the baseline should also change, right? Because we may have baseline at the moment when the project is created and after CR gets raised, is approved another baseline that actually includes these new pieces of work and changes coming from the CR. Fortunately now, Big Picture added this feature to handle multiple baselines, and I think it's pretty great. Let's go through that and let's see how it works and how it can be used. Okay, so after you created your plan, you can of course create a baseline. So this we already mentioned, you can go to baselines and say, new baseline this will basically create a new baseline i already have them so but yeah i will click that anyway so i will create the baseline it will tell me that it will override the current baseline this basically means that the values in the custom fields on the issue level that are uh, in which big picture is storing the start and end dates for the baselines will be overwritten so despite the fact that now there is handling of multiple baselines in a uh, big picture on the Jira level, on the issue level, there is still single baseline, the one stored in those two fields, start baseline, uh, baseline start date and baseline end date. So I will create that, the baseline will be overwritten. Now, if this baseline is a baseline that we really want to use and keep it for the future, for future comparison, what we need to do is go to baseline and say save to version history. What it will do is it will basically bring up this wizard that will allow us to name this baseline. I will name it baseline created date and the uh, version. So yeah, basically by default, it is called baseline created and the date. I will add a version because I already created several of them today. Uh, and after I do that, you see that I have message. And what changed is that if I'll go to baseline, I have here section version history. Now, what this allows me to do is it allows me to, to display one additional baseline to the current baseline. Right? So I have a current baseline that I created that is stored in the 
start and end date custom fields, well, baseline start, baseline end date fields, but also one of the baseline that I saved previously. So if I, for example, select first baseline from today, you'll see that another line appears under the baseline. This is this older baseline, the first one that I created today. And now I am able to compare my current field dates, my current baseline date, dates on the issues, but also one of the historic baseline dates, right? So now I see not only drift from uh, uh, when it comes to dates, how my project plan changed compared to the current baseline, but also to anyone from the past that I picked. So you can see that basically my first baseline has some values. Next one, there were probably some delays and, and for current baseline, there are even more. So basically I can now go and click through all of those baselines and see what changed uh, with time. Okay, so what are the use cases for that? Well, one of them I already mentioned. So for example, change requests. Very often something happens and for example, additional piece of work was identified that earlier we were, we were not aware of. We need to change our plan. We are raising change requests and change requests gets approved. We can actually uh, modify our plan. But now we would like to have this change request, this uh, new pieces of work and maybe changes that were in the plan that were uh, caused by these new pieces of work also reflected in our baseline, right? Because we not only want to track how the plan compared to the initial baseline, but after we did the replanning for the CR, we want to see how's the current plan compared to the what we initially planned after the baseline, after the change request. So obviously after we do the replanning, we can save our current or basically save, we can save our current baseline uh, to version history, do the replanning for the change requests, create new baseline and again, save it to history. Now we have the baseline from the start of our project. We have the baseline after the change request uh, replanning. And obviously we have the current plan. So we are able to compare now the current plan, not only to what we initial planned, but also what we planned after the change request. So it gives us way more insight into how our plan changed and why it changed. So this is first possible use case. Uh, second possible use case, uh, and these are the two ones that I think are most often used is just periodical creation of baseline, right? So uh, for example, you can create a baseline and save it to history to have it separately here uh, each month so that each month you can see what was the plan at the start of the month and were we able to really deliver it as we planned or maybe something changed and, and uh, we had to replan it we are then able to compare what was the drift from the plan between, for example, start of the month and end of the month, but also within last half year, if we have that many uh, historical baselines created here. So basically we see whether change in our plan was just one huge event, or maybe each month we were just slightly off the plan and we had to delay uh, our work just that much. And then probably it would mean that uh, we are doing something wrong, wrong with our planning while one huge event might be something just unexpected that we, we couldn't really plan. So it gives us way more insight into what was happening in our project. Uh, what else? Of course, this feature can be used and is a great tool uh, to get some more information into uh, lessons le learned project uh, process after the project finishes, or maybe not even after it finishes. But basically it gives us insight into uh, basically how our planning went, how off we were, and maybe uh, it will allow us to address some of the uh, causes of the fact that we were not able to really deliver the initial plan uh, 
at the end. Of course, the, the, the great thing about that kind of features is that they can not only be used as they were meant to use, right? So these are the baselines, yes, but we could use them also in slightly different ways. So maybe we could create several uh, different, I, I would use scenarios of our plan, but we have separate scenario features over here that could be used for that too. But there are slight differences when it comes to when the scenario gets updated uh, and when it is not compared to when we're doing the changes uh, to our actual plan. So uh, we could use for that kind of scenarios both multiple baselines and scenarios feature. Uh, each of them have certain upsides and downsides. If you want to discuss them in the details, let us know. We can have a uh, call to go through which of those two would be better for you to use. Uh, but in general, if we have situation where there is several different options, how to approach our project and how to plan it, uh, we could do them either by scenarios or by creating separate, you know, creating the plan snapshot as a baseline or doing the baseline. Uh, then second option of the plan, second variant, another baseline. And then we can compare those baseline to see which of those approaches would suit us best. Uh, yeah, but as, as I mentioned, there are certain things that are different in those approaches. So uh, whatever, uh, whichever suits you best is dependent on your requirements. Okay, let's return to the feature itself, uh, itself for a moment. What else do we have here? So we have baselines. We talked about saving to version history. So that, this basically takes our current baseline and saves it to version history over here. New baseline will create a new baseline, override our values. Uh, in the baseline start and baseline end date fields if we have any. Uh, we can display version history, we can delete the current baseline, uh, but we can also go to manage baselines. Uh, this is pretty straightforward feature. Uh, it allows us basically to see the list of our baselines, uh, restore to current baseline. This is actually interesting because uh, we can just click on this and then the baseline from the history will be restored as our current baseline. This basically means that, again, it will overwrite our current baseline, uh, but this can be useful. We can edit the name and color and delete it. So nothing fancy here. But what is really uh, also interesting is another feature that was added. Uh, this is not the main point of this video, but it's really worth mentioning is that now we can decide who can actually work on baselines. So create them, uh, save as history. So there are two options, either box admin. So if we want to be really restrictive and we do not want everyone to have permissions to edit baseline and mess them potentially, we can just limit them to limit this option to just box admin and then only people with box admin permission will be able to, uh, to work on the baseline or box admin and box editor way wider, uh, wider permission and basically it will allow everyone with box editor permission to be able to uh, create baselines, delete baselines, modify, uh, save them in version history. Uh, so another feature that makes this uh, bit even, even more useful. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and hope it was useful. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I really think that this feature is great. It was very often requested and one of the things that uh, our customers pointed that uh, there should be multiple baselines where now there are the, 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 they are there. Uh, so hope it will be useful for you. Hope this video was useful for you. And yeah, see you in the next one.